Welcome! In this tutorial I'll show you how to interact after a certain duration by filling up a round progress bar. So let us start with the interaction widget. Open it and go to the graph. Here create a new function, I call it set percent and add an input. Set the type as float and also name it here percent. Now you could go to the design tab, search for progress bar and add it here to the overlay, design it a bit and just go back here and get the progress bar and set the percentage or you could watch my tutorial about radial progress bar and then in my opinion you get a way more fitting progress bar filling up for an interaction system. So after you've done the tutorial it will look like this. So just watch the tutorial, even this function has the same name and input, so you will, you will understand it really quick and can implement it really quickly. Then what I did here in the design tab is adding an image here to the overlay. I'm just seeing there's a bit of padding we should remove, so it's like this, really nice. So then let's go back to our attack trace actor component here. Now we're taking a look on what if our interact duration is bigger than zero. So here we're first now getting the focus on the action area, then get the parent actor, and from there we're getting the interaction widget ref. From here we can now get the widget, cast to WB and the action. So casting to this widget here. We can now store this uh, output here as in a variable, promote to variable, or we'll just call it current interaction widget ref. So next up is creating a setting a timer. Set timer by event as time. We are choosing we're promoting this to a new variable. Call it update interaction interval. Just compile. Set it to a really really low number. This will be how often it should update this interaction, this progress update in the visually in the the radial progress bar or in your progress bar, how often per second it should update. Um, we set it now to should update here each 0, 0.0 second. Um, we also need to set it here on looping. Here from the event, create a new custom event called update interaction progress. So then we need another float variable where we are storing our progress, just setting it here, now we want to update it, so increasing it each time we're, we're running this event really quickly, like each 0 0.0 seconds, you can make it also a bit bigger number if you don't want to have that smooth and maybe save some performance or so, but this is really smooth and would 
mean like 100 times per second. Um, so now we want to update this here. So increase it. We're taking the interaction progress, adding. Now we're taking the interaction duration we have stored here. And the divide. Plugging this to this pin. And we, we, we divide 1 by this. Because this is like an actual time of seconds. And by this we are converting this to a rate. We need now to multiply it here with our update interaction inter interval. And we're just adding this to the interaction progress. So then we're getting our current interaction widget ref and running the function set percent. As percent, we're just taking here our progress. And then should not increase all the time. We want to check until it until it has reached its its uh, percentage of one, and then we when it's filled up fully, and then we are done interacting and want to interact. So we're taking here again our interaction progress and check if it's greater equal one. And in that case, same as here, you can just copy that, want to interact on server. That's the one, one thing we want to do. We also want to create a, a function for stopping the interaction. Because then we're done, we can stop this timer here and we can interact. Also, want to uh, store this return value here. Another value. Interaction timer. Okay, compile. Let's create a new function. We call it stop interacting. Stop interaction. And here, we want to check if our interaction progress is bigger than zero. Otherwise, there, if it is zero, then there is nothing to stop, so we can just ignore it here on false. But if it is bigger than zero, we want to clear our interaction timer and we want to get our current interaction widget and set the percent to zero. Then we also want to set our interaction progress on zero and set the current interaction widget ref just no without an input, so we're just setting it to null. Yeah, that should be the stop interacting function. Then we can go back to event graph, just maybe add it here, stop interaction. And then we are safe to interact on server. Um, we also want to. We also want to if we're if we are holding E, for example, like our interacting key, and then we stop holding it. We also want to stop interaction, even if we are not interacting. It will just look. Oh, the interaction progress is already zero, so just nothing will happen. So we can just fire this here. Okay, so let's let's maybe uh, go to our test actor and 
click here on the child actor and they should see in the child actor component default two variables we have focused and interaction duration interact duration is on zero so maybe let's just set it on one and let's try what happens if we interact okay as you can see the selected the wrong image here or it's it's uh Actually, what I did wrong is I didn't create, like in my tutorial, an instance of it. And I set it here to percent zero. Then in the interaction widget, I also chose this image here as default. And also took here for dynamic material instance as parent I also took this round progress per inst okay so let's test it again so let's try focusing the actor and holding E and you see it fills up correctly and then interacts also here but there is still one problem left if we're holding E while unfocusing it doesn't stop the interaction so I'll show you hold E, continue hold E and go back on and it just continued filling up where we unfocused but we want to stop the interaction progress if we are unfocusing the actor. So how can we fix it? Um, let's go here to our interaction trace and in the trace interaction area function and here if we are untracing we also make want to make sure to run here the stop interaction function and there's another thing uh, we also might not want to only running an event interaction event inside of the interactable actor but maybe also for the player like uh, we're interacting with the actor and just want to receive some some data and based on that open a widget locally on the player so no interaction inside of the interactable actor but for the player so how can we do it um, we can create here a new function call it run event after interaction and go back to the event graph when I hear where we interact with the actor, we also want to run this function here. Not only here, but also here. These two spots. So let's open this function. And here we want to get our focus interaction area, get the parent actor. And then we can promote this here to a local variable. So inside this function, we have access to the parent actor, just to have it more tidy in general. We can call it parent actor. Now, based on that, we can here get the class and check here if the class equals for example our uh, BP test interaction actor that is true we can uh, let's just print here a string for test but as I said, at the same place, we could also, for example, opening a widget and then getting here again the parent actor and, I don't know, get some, get some data that is relevant for the widget or so, stuff like that, and execute it in here. So now it should print test if we're interacting. Let's just test it. We're interacting. 
And you see on the top, it prints a test. So that works really well. Um, that's everything for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we're gonna take a look on custom shapes because at the moment we have only this box interaction trace area to interact. But what if we have another shape, for example, a cone, and we don't want to have it focused if we are uh, highlighting this box, but maybe a shape that fits to the interactable mesh. So we're taking a look on that in the next tutorial. Uh, see you then.